It's been a hell of a week with reviews and sit-downs with the co-creator and writer of both Beast Lands and Slightly Exaggerated, not to mention the tips at the top of the week. And it's all been leading up to this. Without further ado, here's our interview with Curtis Clout. Curtis, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to chat. Absolutely, absolutely. So for those of you who don't know, Curtis, why don't you give them a little bit of background? So I am a full-time comic writer. I quit my day job about six months ago to nice. be full-time now, but I've been doing this for about five to six years. That's usually how it starts for uh, upcoming writers. Like You usually have to have a day job before you can do full-time, but I've just been self-publishing through Kickstarter, and now I uh, have signed a few of my series with some publishers, so I should have some news soon. And then I'm just trying to, just trying to make a living writing comics. The one I love. Good stuff, man. You've made the plunge. You are now fully a comic book writer. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Um, so why do you write comics? Like what what got you? I know this is like, you know, we're covering the basics here, but what what, what got you into comics? What was it? Uh, for me, obviously, like, I grew up and I just absolutely loved geeky content. I just uh, loved how, you know, the stories were being told and like there were real issues being told but through these awesome out of this world designs and creations and characters mm -hmm. uh so what kind of led you and that's how it got me into this geek stuff but what led you into comics sort of the same thing yeah like growing up i would play games and read comics and then i always like wanted to tell my own stories so i just yeah. have been a fan of storytelling but when i was playing games or reading comics i would get my own ideas for these worlds and kind of make my own comics um so it was like that was kind of like my path throughout life is trying to figure out how to tell my own stories and then yeah. in my early 20s i got more and more into comics leading reading a lot of uh, images catalog and stuff so i nice. decided to try to make my own comics and it got me here now good stuff man good stuff and what and what where do you say like just as, this is always a curious question that i have for creators in general where do you kind of get your inspiration where does it come to you from is it kind of just like oh an idea came to me and you just kind of grab it and go with it um because for like myself whenever i get an idea for anything like that's kind of how it is you're kind of just like walking or you're doing whatever is it but i know it's not like that for everybody so how, how what's the process kind of for you to to get these ideas and where do they come from sometimes it just uh, comes out of nowhere yeah like you're walking the dog and then you're just thinking of stuff or listening to like soundtracks i like to listen to a lot of movie soundtracks game soundtracks like mm -hmm. without any um dialogue that'll kind of like get you in the zone to think stuff but then also consuming other entertainment like watching some studio ghibli films will always lead to some like weird inspiration or playing like a, a good game will lead to inspiration mm -hmm. so sometimes like consuming stuff will kind of give you your own spin on new ideas nice nice um I know I noticed something about your books. All your books are uh, incredible and really, really well drawn and and just beautiful art across the board. Um, what what was the process like uh, collaborating with those artists? Like, how is it that you um, come to that design conclusion? Is it you pick an artist because you've seen some work that they've done and you're like, wow, that really is kind of something that I'd like for this book? What what's that process like? I imagine it's different every time or sometimes, but a generalization of it um I'm, I'm picky about the artist like you want to choose an artist that really excites you and these are going to be like your co-creators usually so you want somebody that you can work well with um for joe she's the co-creator of beast lens i just saw some of her pages in her portfolio but she just did those pages for fun like she's never drawn a comic before this is her first series surprisingly mm -hmm. she's really good but Incredible. um and then so i just reached out to her like I had the idea for Beastlands, and it was just about finding the right art style for that idea. So I knew she was perfect for Beastlands. So I, I pitched her the idea, and she signed on to draw her first comic. And then for Pius, for um, Slightly Exaggerated, I saw his work on another Kickstarter comic, and I just loved his style, and he was yeah. someone that I knew I wanted to work with. So I was just kind of waiting on him whenever he wanted to work together. And then his schedule opened it up, so I, I, I knew his style would work well for like this crazy fantasy world. It's it's amazing what you've set up in there, uh, but we'll get to both Beastlands and slightly exaggerated in a bit. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask you about, um, and maybe this is just uh, me making connections where there aren't any, but were you ever an anime fan? Because I yeah. feel like yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, because I feel am. like a lot of um, without it being obvious, I, I just got a sense that you were an anime fan. You know what I mean? It, it's not like there was anything that spelled out anime to me. There's no, you know, bloody noses happening. There's no, like, giant exaggerated, uh, you know, nervous drops on people's heads or anything like that. But it just, the, the way everything played out, it felt like, uh, an, in especially Beastlands, it feels like this epic anime saga that's about to unfold. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and slightly exaggerated, I... 
I just, I, I absolutely love Slightly Exact. Well, again, we're going to get to these after. Uh, but there's something a bit, maybe not as uh, anime, definitely more comic booky and stuff like that to Slightly Exaggerated, but definitely with Beast Lines and some elements of Slightly Exaggerated, I felt that anime influence. What, what were some of your greater influences in anime? I mean, I'm a huge fan of Cowboy Bebop and Samurai nice. Champloo. And then nice. uh, all of the Gil- Ghibli films, Miyazaki, huge fan of him. Just watching those growing up, Princess Mononoke and uh, like Spirited Away are some of my favorites. So I feel like uh, Ghibli, like those like weird fantasy worlds influence all my work. Like slightly exaggerated is very much like a more mature Ghibli world. Yeah. Um, and then as far as like American animation, like Avatar The Last <laughs> Airbender uh, inspires a lot of my stuff. That's You can probably see some of that in Beastlands as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's actually one of my questions for Beastlands, but again, <laughs> we'll get to that because I have so it's just awesome. But um, yeah, so that definitely makes sense. Um, you do a really great job of gripping people in right at the beginning uh, with, with both of these. And I want that, that's is that something you want to do because you want to do that in every comic or is that something you want to do because it ties into this being a creator owned project? and having to create that desire to to know more or, or is it kind of like somewhere in the middle What's somewhere that in like? the middle a little of both like i feel like for any comic you write you want to try to hook the reader within the first five pages or they might not want to read it anymore but that's yeah. even more important than if you're writing like a licensed superhero story then they're more likely to keep reading just because they have that uh connection to that superhero and they, you know they're reading hundreds of comics from but for a creator owned series where you're introducing them to a brand new world uh, you really have to try to hook them within the first few pages or they might not ever read it again, you know. So if you're, yeah. you're, you're I'm writing this new series, I want to hook them for Beastland. So hopefully they will want to read the rest of the series. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you definitely got me hooked. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it for sure. So you've you've put out numerous comics you, you spoke about on the tips video, which you can watch on the channel. Uh, you spoke about uh, starting small, and you've done a lot of work. It's been five years, you said, right? So what has been um, your greatest accomplishment along those five years? You know, releasing all these comics. Uh, I know there's still a lot more great times to come, but as of right now, what's been your greatest accomplishment? Uh, the last Beastlands Kickstarter was pretty crazy. Uh, that was for issues four and five, and uh, the goal was 14000 That was like our biggest goal I've ever done for a Kickstarter, mm-hmm. and it ended up raising over $50,000. So that was like a crazy feeling just to see uh, that much interest in our comic. And then we actually ended up making a uh, uh, song for Beastlands. It was like a theme song with like an orchestra and stuff. So that was pretty awesome as well. So you, you finally saw like the, the fruits of your labor coming to fruition, like in full. I also saw that slightly exa- slightly exaggerated got uh, acknowledged as well. So I'm sure there's a lot of uh, great things to come for slightly exaggerated as well. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, like everything in comics takes so long, but we have some news coming for Beastlands and slightly exaggerated as far as publishers go. So it'll be exciting once we can finally talk about that stuff. What's that actually on that note? What's what's that process like? Why does it take so long? Uh, especially, I imagine as creator owned, it's even longer because there isn't uh, this you know defined structure when things need to come out. Uh, what, what what takes up the most time in that process? What's that process like? I mean, just kickstarting alone takes a lot of time. Uh, like you have to run a Kickstarter, finish the the art, print a book, which can take a few months before you get it here, and then ship okay. it out to everyone, and then run another Kickstarter for the next issue. So that alone takes time. Um, and then finding publishers, like you're uh, back when you could go to conventions before COVID, uh, yeah. maybe meeting editors and stuff. And sometimes you get lucky and meet an editor at a publisher, and then you you just keep that uh, contact going over months. And then eventually you might get the chance to pitch it to them. And then you know it's just a lot of approvals going through the uh, hierarchy at any publisher. So that all takes time as well. Nice. So so you really uh, met those people through conventions. Yeah, like it I, wasn't I've like done a- some. My other series, The Wild Cosmos, I've pitched it to their submission page on Scout Comics, and that one got accepted through there. But the other two was just from going to conventions and getting lucky. Like, that's kind of like the grind as a new writer. Like, you definitely have to go to as many conventions as you can and uh, meet other writers, meet other publishers. And so if you put in the work, you might get lucky and meet some of these publishers. Good stuff. That's really cool. Um what is i mean you kind of spoke to this a little bit before but what is your your favorite publishing house uh i mean 
Image is up there. Dark Horse is up there. Like these big yeah. creator ones. Uh, and then like in 2020, we have some of so many of these like upcoming publishers coming out that are creator owned. Like Vault Comics is awesome. Uh, Scout Comics too. The Wild Cosmos is too. They got some good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Aftershock Comics. So it's like I feel like this is a good time to be a upcoming writer in creator owned comics because you have all of these different options to try to get your books signed by. Nice. Nice. Um, and when it comes to, so have you ever read, uh, have you ever been a big fan of the big two, essentially the Marvel or DC? Not since or have I was you a always kid. leaned. Yeah. Sorry? Since I've, since I'm not since I was a kid, as a kid, I was a big fan of like Wolverine and Spider-Man stuff. But, um, uh, as I kind of got older, I got more into creator own comics. So that's like mm-hmm. where most of my interest lies in now. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was, I started off hundred percent DC. Like I was DC to the to the core, uh, and then also Spider Man, which I didn't really consider Marvel. I just considered Spider Man, Spider Man. <laughs> but that's that's where I started, and then I kind of went backwards, and then I started picking up uh, a couple Image comics, a couple Aftershock. Uh, I have one or two Dark Horse too, uh, and now I'm taking that plunge to create our own because a friend of mine who uh, was the one who kind of set this interview up, new X guy on uh, Instagram and now on YouTube as well. Uh, he he was the one who was always talking about creator own projects and stuff like that and really backing them and I'm like man let me check this out so it's been like a year now that I've been really looking into uh, creator own projects and and kind of diving in there a bit it's been awesome awesome the only thing that I find is that um, it's a little intimidating for some people so I think it's awesome to have things like this where uh, you know the actual creator and comic book writer will interview and kind of get people engaged so they can get an understanding and a sense of what they're going to have in store in that yeah comic. definitely yeah there is so many different options when it comes to creator own so i can see why mm-hmm. it could be intimidating like trying to choose one but i usually find writers that i'm a fan of and just will end up reading all of the work like simon spurry or rick remender stuff like that mm-hmm. seeing that you uh have mostly been into image and dark horse and things like that for the majority of life and creator owned of course um what is your take on the never-ending comic versus the comic book that actually has an end? I mean, I think as creator own, for sure, you need to have an ending. Like most good stories have an ending. Like that's mm-hmm. a that's a really weird way that probably only exists in comics to like have that never-ending series that goes on for hundreds and hundreds of issues. Yeah. But I mean, people get attached to those characters, so they want to keep reading it. But like, I would definitely. I, I mean, all of my stuff is gonna have endings. Like to tell a good story, you need to have an ending. I, I agree. I, I somehow have fallen for all these like I love Marvel and DC like I'm a huge fan but like I do fall in love more with the stories that get told certain stories that get told within everything that's going on so what's your take on the never-ending comic though what 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 do you do you feel like um they suffer because of it a bit or do you feel that it provides more opportunity to get creative because these stories have been done over a million times uh, I mean, it's it's hard. Like, if I had to write a character like Batman, where so many people have had their chance to write their Batman story, it'd be hard to try to think of something new. But uh, I mean, it can it can suffer because of that, because it has no ending, and you're always restarting and continuity and all that. But if I think if the writer has a chance to just kind of do their own thing and they have the mm-hmm. freedom, which is probably rare for these big characters, then it could be good. But there, I mean, like Scott Snyder's Batman run was great. Um, mm-hmm. So like, you you have these new writers coming in and giving their take on these characters. So yeah. hopefully that they can get the freedom to tell the story they want to tell still. Cool. And should you be presented with the chance, uh, what would, would you A, take it? Uh, and B, what what character would you do in either Marvel or DC? I would for sure take it, even though I'm not a big superhero guy. But <laughs> yeah. getting paid to write comics is, uh, yeah. you can't turn anything down like as a writer, especially at this point in my career. So for sure, um, I mean, I would be a little worried about the pressure of like these big characters have such big fan bases and not wanting to mess up. But it is a chance to try to grow your own fan base and hopefully some of them could come back to you, create your own work. But uh, I think, mm-hmm. what was that? I was just going to say, I think you'd make a really cool comic on Black Label. I don't know if you've had a oh, chance yeah, to read yeah, any DC yeah. Black Label, but those actually have endings and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, well, some of them anyway. And it's they're, they're really cool stuff over there. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I could definitely see you doing something label. really cool and weird mm-hmm. over there. Mm-hmm. I, I want to see uh, Daniel Warren Johnson. I know he had his Wonder Woman take. That looks awesome. And I was yeah, I haven't read that White one. Knight. Yet, really White Knight was good. White Knight is incredible. Also, uh, Joker Killer Smile. I don't know if you had the chance to read that. No, I haven't. Oh, dude, that it's it's something it's something really cool. It's instead of it's a story. It's a Joker story, right? Technically, 
but it's actually about his psychiatrist who is trying to cure the Joker. Wow. And I'll just leave it at that. But it's it's I mean it's really cool because I like how they spun it on its head, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, speaking of series, let's get to talking about your series. Uh, definitely support his book. Definitely support all of his books. He is an incredible writer. Uh, you'll see it instantly uh, as soon as you pick up one of his books. Um, you, you know, it's just great. It's just really great. I don't know what else to say. It's fluid. Thank you. It's uh, It just makes sense. I, I feel a lot of times, sometimes... I feel like a lot of the time, sometimes, man, that's redundant. <laughs> I, I feel like at times, um, in some of the creator-owned stuff that I've read as well, it's great, but it lacks that that finish. And that finish means the world sometimes. And I feel like you have that so good. And then especially in Beastlands, in, in, you know, in all of them, but especially moving on, like you see it progressing, that synergy. It's just beautiful to read, man, and, uh, and just a really great time, and I'm excited to to see what's in store and what comes next. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's awesome to hear. <laughs> and, and so where can people find you? I am on uh, social out? media, uh, at Curtis Clow, um, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and then uh, BeastlandsComic.com will take you to the Kickstarter, the newest Kickstarter for Beastlands, and to InfinityStudios.com is where my shop is. Awesome, awesome. So thank you so much, Curtis. Guys, Please check out Curtis's work. You will not be disappointed. Again, that's to infinitystudios.com. Go download his book. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for all the kind words. It's always good to chat about comics, especially your own comics and people that enjoy reading them. So I appreciate it. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed Launch Week. Thank you, Curtis, once again for sitting down with us and talking about Beastlands and Slightly Exaggerated, and not to mention those awesome tips you gave at the top of the week. Now, while I wanted to do something special for you guys for launch week, the rest of season one will look a lot different. So stay tuned on Sunday where we'll be dropping what you can expect for season one. As always, my name's Eddie, and I'm here reminding you guys to keep it geeky.